Hello students, my name is Dr. Gajendra Purohit and you are watching our YouTube channel. I want to tell you that I have started teaching vector calculus again. And today I am going to tell you about the Stokes theorem. What is Stokes theorem? Based on this, questions are formed in the exam. That with the help of Stokes theorem, how can you find the value of any line integral? Plus, its verification is asked. So I will also tell you about that. Please look at this. We will discuss the Stokes theorem if we have any line integral and we need to find its value. So its value will be double integration n dot curl of f ds or equal to curl of f dot n ds. And what is the n that have been mentioned in the formula? It is unit normal vector and in the Green's theorem also which is about changing the line integral to double integration. We can solve it easily. Stokes theorem allows the same and sometimes questions are in such a way that they are very difficult to be solved using Green's theorem. So, we can use Stokes theorem. But questions in your exam will explicitly tell you to use Stokes theorem or the Green's theorem. So, you have to use that particular theorem to solve this question, right? In this, I want to give you a little more knowledge that whenever we will convert this from the line integral to the double integral, you need to have an idea of surface integral. Earlier, I had uploaded a video with the whole concept of surface integral. If you haven't watched it, find it in the iTab so that you don't have any problem in understanding it. But I will revise this concept a little bit for you. That students might get some problems while choosing the ds. So I want to tell you that if we have an xy plane here. In that case, we take dx as dx dy upon n dot k. Where n is our unit normal vector. If we have a yz plane. In that case, we take ds as dy dz and here n dot comes as i. Means if there is no x, then there will be i. And if no y, then j. Right? So on this you have to pay attention. Let's look at the question. Here we have f equals yi plus zj plus xk and s is the part of this sphere above the xy plane. You are being asked that what will be the value of f dot dr. You are being asked about the value of f dot dr. Students, do you have any idea? So, we all know that in here its value will be curl of f dot n ds. What do we have this for? Tell me what is it? It is the value, right? Now, in this what do we do at first? Look at this f that we have. We will find its curl. So, students tell me how will we calculate the curl. We know that the value of the curl is del cross f. Okay. The curl of f is del cross f. If you don't have any idea about curl, then watch it through i tab. I have uploaded a very good video on it. So, what will be the curl f? It will be i, j and k. Then we will have del by del x, del by del y and del by del z. Then what will we have here? Then for f, we will have the coefficients of i, j and k as y, z and x. So, we will find their determinants. As soon as you calculate its determinant, it will be minus i minus j and minus k. Now we will talk about the unit normal vector and what our n cap will be. Since we have this x y plane, then whatever we have besides the available plane, that will be the n cap. So what will be the value of n cap here? k, right? Now we will put the value of k here. So students, here will be the k, right? And its value will be, now we will see the value will be double integration of, this will be minus i minus j minus k dot we will have this k into dx dy. So, you can see it will be k dot k1 and here value will be minus of dx dy. And since we know that we have the xy plane, so we will have a circle x square plus y square equals 1. And my dear students, as we know that this formula which is double integration dx dy, this is the formula for area. So, the area of this circle that we get is pi r square. Value of r is 1. So, we will only get pi. If there will be pi 1 square, then pi will remain. So, if we solve this, then what will we get is minus pi. You will get the answer. Now, a question might arise in your mind that I have converted this line integral into double integration and solved it. You will say, but if in the exam we are asked to verify Stokes theorem, then we will find its answer using double integration and then using line integral. So, whether the value of minus pi can be found using line integral or not. Let me tell you whether we can get value of minus pi using line integral or not. So, let us see. Now, we will discuss value of its line integral. So, students, we know we will calculate the value of f dot dr here. Tell me what is given as f here. This is given as yi plus zj plus xk and dr. So, we all know that r, that is the position vector. Whose value we have is xi plus yj plus zk. So, here the value of dr will be, that will be dxi plus dyj plus dzk. So, we will put this value at this place and this will be dxi plus dyj plus dzk. So, students, we will find the dot product here and we will get y dx, right? 
and this will come as z dy and this one will be x dz. But since we have the x y plane here, the value of z will be 0. So, what will be the value of dz here? It will become 0 and here we have z 0, when it is dz 0, the value that will come to us will be y dx. Now, I want to tell you that since we have this x y plane here, so this will be x square plus y square is equal to 1. We know that x will be equal to cos theta parametric coordinate and this will be sin theta here and this will form a circle like this. Is it clear? Since we have line integral and there are two variables, so we will convert it into one variable using parametric coordinates. This is the concept of line integral. If you have a confusion about this, you can watch my videos through the i tab, right? So, what will be the value of y here? Sin theta? Here students, x is the cos theta. So, if we take the derivative of its dx, what will this be then? Minus sin theta d theta. So, here we will have its value as minus sin theta d theta and inside the circle, in entire circle, where will theta travel? It will go from 0 to 2 pi take the minus sign out from 0 to 2 pi and this will be sin square theta and we can also write it as 1 minus cosine of 2 theta upon 2 into d theta. Then minus 1 by 2 will come out upon its integration we will get theta and the integration of cos will give us sin 2 theta upon 2. The limit will be 0 to 2 pi. So, here we will be having minus 1 by 2 and this is 2 pi. Sin 2 pi is 0 making all 0. So, from here its value is minus pi. When solved using line integral it is minus pi. And if theorem applied, then also we have minus pi. So, in this way, it is very easy to verify. Let us look at some more questions for better understanding. Let us try. So, students, what is the question asking? Verify Stokes theorem for the function. f is equal to x square i plus x y j integrated around the square x y plane whose sides are these, these and these, right? These are the sides given to us. So, if we trace it here, x equals 0 means y axis, y equals 0 means x axis, x equals a and y equals a will be lines. If we write its coordinates, we will get its coordinate. Now, we need to verify it by solving this same question using line integral as well. And also using Stokes theorem and answer from both methods should be exactly same. If same, then what do we call Stokes theorem here? It is considered verified. Let us apply the Stokes theorem first, right? When we apply Stokes theorem, we know that we have Stokes theorem as f dot dr equal to double integration of. Here it is curl, curl of f dot and ds, right? So, students, first we will calculate the curl of f and what we will have as the value of the curl of f? Its value will be del cross f. So, for this we will have i, j, k and it will be del by del x, del by del y and del by del z. So, we will have this as x square and x y and 0 and we will calculate its determinant doing the derivative with respect to y and z will be 0 minus 0 minus j and derivative with respect to x, this will also be 0 minus 0 plus k its derivative with respect to x will be y and we will get this. The value we will get here will be k y and since we have an x y plane, so students tell me about the unit normal vector that we will get after solving. So, the double integration of here its value is k y and this one is k and here we have dx dy and what we will get for k dot k? It will be 1. Now, what to do? This will be y. It will be dx dy. What should we apply here? Limits, but the limits are directly given as constant limits. So, what will we do here? x equals 0 to a and y equals 0 to a. What will we do first? Integration with respect to y. So, when we do the integration with respect to y, we will get y square by 2, 0 to a and here we will have dx. Here we will get a square by 2. Taking this out, we get 0 to a, we will have dx. Then we will again integrate this with respect to x. So, this will be 0 to a and we will simplify this. So, this will be a cube by, it will be 2. If I do this with help of line integral, what should our answer be? It should be a cube by 2. If that happens, we have our Stokes theorem get verified with it. Now, what we do is with the help of line integral, then we know we will take out along with this, then along with this, along with this and along with this. We will add all the values we get for all these four. What should we get? a cube by 2. If this happens, then our work will be done. So, first let us calculate along a b or along c. Okay. So, what do we calculate students along c? If we talk about c1, then what do we have? y is constant. So, y is 0. So, dy will be 0. See, there is no change in y. Change is only in x, right? So, first we need to understand how to write this. Here, we need to write f dot dr. So, what is the way to write this? Wherever there is i, write dx there. Where there is j, write dy. Actually, the way to write this is f. The f that we have, how do we write f dot dr? Students, it is x square i plus x y j, right? And what is the dr that we have? It is dxi plus dyj plus dzk and when we find its dot product. So, i dot y will be this and j dot j will become this. So, we will write it. Well, let us come to the point. 
So now we will discuss since its value is this, right? Now, if we talk about along C1, then its limit for x, you know, we will talk exactly about C1, f dot dr. So ultimately dy will become 0. And the value of this dy will become 0. So what will we have left? x square dx. And the limit for this is going from 0 to a, right? From 0 to a. So its integration will be x cube by 3. When we substitute, we'll get a cube by 3, right? Now we will talk about along C2, right? So students tell me when we see that along C2, what is constant here? x is constant. So here the value of dx will be 0. The change is happening in y, right? So you will see that dx is being 0. As a result, we will be left with. We know that this will come as C2 f dot dr. And we can see here that the limit of y is going from 0 to a, 0 to a. This is x, y, dy. And if we put a in place of x, it will be a, y. Then dy will come here and we will take a out. And its integration will give y square by 2, limit 0 to a. And when we simplify this, it will become a cube by 2. Now next, we will talk about along C3. That what will we have here as along C3? When we talk about C3. So students, what are we having here? Y is constant. Then what will this be? If we have y as a, so dy will become 0, right? And in x, we have from a to 0. So here we will have C3. We will calculate value of f dot dr. When we calculate f dot dr, so here, this is what we have. If we make dy 0, we will get x square dx, right? What did we get? x square dx. And what will be the limit we have? This will become a to 0. Remember this. So when we do the integration of this, we will get x cube by 3. When we simplify this a to 0, we will get minus a cube by 3. Now next, we'll talk about along C4. So C4 is going from here to there. So students, we are having x as the constant figure. And if x is said to be constant here, then dx will become 0. So if we put 0 wherever there is dx and also in place of x, then I want to tell you that the value of C4f dot dr will become 0. Let's transfer these four values here. So the value of C1 that we are getting is a cube by 3. And the value of C2 we are getting is a cube by 2. And value of C3 will be minus a cube by 3. Here it will be 0 and both of these will cancel each other. Then a cube by 2 will be here. So in this way we can verify this easily. Using line integral, the answer is still a cube by 2. And when we used Stokes theorem, answer was still the same. You can see the entire solution here which I explained using line integral. This is its value. And using Stokes theorem, we have got this answer, right? Another question. Here we are asked to use Stokes theorem and this function is given where C is the boundary of the triangle. 2, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0 and 0, 0, 6. Here you have to find its value using Stokes theorem. So we know that first. Let's see here we have f dot dr given. If we need f, then tell me how will we get f in this? Listen carefully. Wherever there is dx, so students put i in place of dx. Okay. Wherever there is dy, put j there. And wherever there is dz, we should put k, right? That's when the value of f dot dr will come like this. So we have f. Okay. This is f here. Now we will find its value using Stokes theorem. Calculating value using Stokes theorem. We know what's here. We need to find value of its line integral, right? We are being told to find its value. So we know its value is double integration of, here it comes as curl of f dot n cross ds, right? So tell me how will we find curl of f i j k del by del x del by del y del by del z, right? We'll put this function, then find its determinant. Then we will have i plus k. Now we have i plus k. But students, please understand that here we do not have any information about the plane. So here we do not have any idea about the unit normal vector at all. It is not given. So you will have to see the value of the n cap here in this equation. This will actually be the equation of the plane, right? If you can see, tell me what is happening. A plane is forming. You can see this is the x-axis. This is y-axis and it's the z-axis. So this intersects at 2, 0, 0. This intersects at 0, 3, 0. And this is intersecting at 0, 0, 6. So this is the plane we have. And the intercept form of plane will be x by 2 plus y by 3 plus z by 6 equals to 1. We will multiply it by 6. So this will be 3x plus 2y plus z equals to 6. So what will this be termed as? Equation of the plane, right? Now we have to find n cap. So we will use this to find it, right? How will we do it? Let's see. This is the calculation I have shown you. Now we need to find its unit normal vector. What is the formula for the unit normal vector? n cap equals grade f upon mod of grade f. So now we will find its gradient. How do we find it? Derivative with respect to x into y. Derivative with respect to y into j, respect to z into k, so 3i plus 2j plus k. So we will get this. Now what will we do? 
we need to find its unit normal vector. So here we will take the value of n cap and the value of curl of f. Okay, getting it? So as soon as we put this, we will get this value and into ds will be there. Now i dot i1 and k dot k1 will be obtained. And when we will simplify this, we will get the answer. Now I want to tell you that this was the n cap. If you look at this, what was the value of n cap? 3i plus 2j plus k upon we had root 14. Since we know that whenever nothing is given in the surface integral, in that case we will take the xy plane. If we will take xy plane, so in that case ds will be dx dy upon n dot k. Now you will say I didn't use this concept in previous question. We are doing this because in last two questions we had the xy plane, right? So we took it there, but nothing was said here. That is why we have to do it this way. Now what will this be? dx dy. Now n cap dot k. So this is our n cap. If we take its dot product with k, if we take its dot product with k, what will this be? 1 by root 14. So we will put this 1 by root 14 from here to there. Root 14 has moved to numerator. So the dx we have, its value will be root 14 dx dy. Both 14 will be cancelled and we will have dx dy and this will be the formula for the area. Which area? The area of OAB. We need to find the area of the triangle in the xy plane. Now I want to tell you that when we made the plane here, these were the x-axis, y-axis and z-axis and here it was intersecting at 2. And students, we had this as 0, 3, 0 and this was 0, 0, 6. So when you make the plane, this will be the plane but the thing that really matters to us, it is the xy plane. This is it. Is this clear? So we know this is its base and this is its height. 1 by 2 base into height. This will be its area. And after cancelling this, we will have 12 as answer. So 12 will be its value here. Okay. The value of this line integral will be equal to 12. So in this way, we can solve this question very easily. So students, thank you so much. Please comment and let me know how do you like this video. If you want to watch more videos on vector calculus, you can watch them here. I've also started a foundation series where I'm discussing basic concepts for you. If you want to watch, you can go here and see the entire playlist and here you can go to the channel to subscribe it. Okay. Thank you all very much. Bye-bye.